Okay, so in this video, we are going just to introduce the basic concept of vector quantity. So, what is a vector? So, before we define a vector, we need first to compare a vector as well as what in a scalar quantity. Okay, so these are the simple things which you guys you know already. So, a scalar quantity is just basically a physical quantity which has got only magnitude but no direction. Okay, so we can say that. This is just a physical quantity which has got only what? Um, only magnitude. Okay. Only. Magnitude only. Meaning that it has got no direction. But what of a vector quantity? So a vector quantity is a physical quantity which has got both magnitude and direction. Okay. So we can say that this one has got both magnitude magnitude is the same as a size okay magnitude and a direction okay now when we talk of a magnitude it's the same as a size okay so now when you hear someone to say or oh, maybe a car moves 20 kilometers south meaning that is a vector quantity because 20 kilometers is a magnitude or it's a size now, when you say um, uh, south, that is a direction. Okay, so that is a vector quantity. So now, let's, let's see some examples of what? Eh? The scalar quantity as well as vector quantity. Okay. So now, uh, what are the examples of scalar quantity? Now, when you talk of a physical quantity, any physical quantity, any physical quantity which has got only magnitude yeah which has got only magnitude we can think of time okay let's think of time so now when we say um is 12 hours you can say 12 hours east 12 hours south or 12 hours at an angle of 30 degrees no so that is a scalar quantity it has got only magnitude but no direction okay that is a scalar quantity. Now, let's also think of um, uh, let's think of speed. So, these are some examples. We have got speed. Speed is also one of the examples of scalar quantity. We can also think of um, uh, we can also think of what distance. Okay. Yeah. Now, what of uh, what are some of examples of what uh, vector quantity? So, vector quantity when we, when we think of um, uh, force when you say uh, you push maybe you are pushing an object maybe you are applying an, uh, the force of 20 newtons east meaning that this is the ground this is the object you are applying that force of 20 newtons now that object is moving toward what east that is a vector quantity so that is a vector so now when you think of a vector you need to include direction very important if you just say 20 newtons that is not a vector because there is no direction you are supposed to include the direction okay so we, we can think of uh, even displacement okay displacement and the distance they are the same thing but the only difference comes in when you change the direction that is the only difference let's think uh, let's talk of um, uh, velocity Okay, so velocity is also measured in meters per second. Even the speed is also measured in meters per second. But these two things are different because speed is a scalar quantity, velocity is a vector quantity. Okay, so that is what we need to understand. So basically, we are going to be talking about vectors. So we need to understand that a vector quantity is a uh, um, a physical quantity which has got both magnitude and direction. So when we talk of twenty newtons east, or twenty, you maybe a car is moving. Uh, with a speed of uh, 20 meters per second south. Definitely that is a vector. Okay. So now, let's think of um, maybe let's talk of addition of a vector. How can you add a vector? Okay. So let's say that you have got a vector which is um, or, or let's talk of uh, uh, perpendicular vectors. So we are talking about the addition of a vector okay now what what if 
if we have got a vector uh, which is perpendicular to each other let's say we have got uh, maybe let's talk of parallel first let's talk of parallel parallel vectors okay now when two vectors are parallel so let's say that we have got vector a which is moving in this direction and then we have got uh, 10 newtons and then we have got vector b which is also maybe let's say it's 5 newtons now let's add vector what is a plus b okay now a plus b in this case since we are saying that a vector quantity is a physical quantity which has got both magnitude and direction meaning that when we want uh meaning that when we want to add these two vectors we need to uh, consider the direction so if we can go back to uh, the Cartesian plane going this side it is positive x going this side it is negative x then going this side it is positive y going down there it is what negative y okay so now as you can see these arrows they are pointing in this direction toward east so they're pointing toward east meaning that they are both positive so when it comes for addition what we are going to do is uh, we are going just to get the way they are and we are going to assign them as as positive so what we are going to do here we are going to get 10 plus we are going to get 10 newtons you can even put newtons plus 5 newtons so at the end of the day we are going to get 15 newtons so that is the addition which is there what if the direction is different let's say we have got vector a which is pointing toward east and then we have vector b which is pointing let's say this is our vector b now it is pointing there then we have five newtons so now when we want to find a plus b what is going to happen there is since vector b is pointing toward west we are going to assign that guy as negative so we're going to say it's going to be 10 newtons instead of say it's going to be plus now we're going to put open brackets then it's going to be five, uh, negative 5 now why are, am i putting negative 5 the reason why i'm putting negative 5 because the arrows is giving me the direction where the vector is, is, is going so the vector is pointing toward west meaning the 5 is supposed to have a negative therefore my a, uh, my a plus b in this case is going to be 5 okay so that is all what we need to understand when it comes to parallel vectors now let's talk of uh, perpendicular vectors okay now when you say perpendicular what comes in your mind perpendicular so when you when you when you, when you say perpendicular what we need to understand is that eh, we have got two vectors they are they are making 90 degrees so when you have this kind if this is a vector that is also a vector so they are making 90 degrees that is what eh? perpendicular vector so now let's say that we have um, vector a let's say we have vector a which is pointing in this direction we have got 10 newtons okay so if we have 10 newtons 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 then let's say we have got also vector b let's say we have got vector b which is pointing up okay and then let's say it is 5 newtons okay now when you want to add vector a plus b what happens okay so now if i get this vector a which is pointing there which is 10 let's say this is vector a then you have vector b which is pointing up which is 5 newtons now to get a plus b is going to just to connect these two points from a to 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 b so this is going to be our a plus b so to get a plus b as you can see this is 90 this is forming 90 so it is more like giving us what pythagoras theorem so to get a plus b to get a plus b we are going to say it's going to be the square root of a squared plus b squared okay so now let's take that uh, we have that vector which we have we have 10 
So it's going to be 10 squared plus 5 squared. So what is 10 squared plus 5 squared? Okay. So we have 10, I square it, plus 5, then I square it. It's giving me 125. Now I get the square root. I'm getting 11.18. So 11.18. Meaning that is Newton. So meaning that is my A plus B. So that is what we need to understand. Now, uh, the crucial part here is this under vectors. When it comes for a vector which is neither perpendicular nor parallel, when you when you say neither perpendicular nor parallel, meaning that a vector is in this direction. So that is our vector. Okay. Or let me put this line here. That is our vector. So this vector is neither perpendicular nor parallel. As you can see, it is moving in both y as well as x direction. So we can say that let's let's uh, let's say that this is vector a, and then we have this vector is going to to move in x then as well as in y okay so now this vector is going to form an angle so which you can call it as theta now this vector as you can see now a vector is always denoted by if this is vector a is either you can put an l on top or you can say you can put a magnitude okay that is what we need to know again so now what is happening there guys is that yeah? Uh, this vector is going to have x component as well as y component meaning that this vector is neither parallel nor perpendicular okay so we are going to say that this is our this is going to be our ax meaning it is the x component of vector a then this is going to be our ay now if i want to find vector a what should i do provided that i know the x component as well as the y component okay so we are going to be using sokatoa Okay. Now, this Sokatoa, what is going to happen here is that we're going to start with sine. What, so, what is sine theta? So, sine theta is going to be the opposite. The opposite of this angle is Ay. So, it's going to be Ay divided by what? Uh, the hypotenuse is vector A. Okay. Now, if I want to find uh, Ay, I'm going to cross multiply. Then, I'm going to have Ay is going to be equal to vector A times sine theta. So this means that whenever I want to, to resolve any vector into y component, maybe you have been asked to resolve any vector into y component, you are supposed to get that vector times what? Times sine the angle. So let's say that, let's first uh, do the one for cos. So now the one for cos, we are going to say that cos theta is going to give us what? Cos is adjacent over hypotenuse. Adjacent is ax. So we're going to say ax divided by what? Vector a. Now, to find Ax, the x component of that vector is going to be the vector which we have times cos theta. Okay? So, these are the formulas which we need to understand here. To say, if I have been, if, if you have been given a vector, then you want to resolve that vector into x as well as y component. If you want to resolve in x uh, component, just get that vector, cos the angle. If you want to resolve it into y component, just get that vector, sign the angle. Okay? Now, what if we want to find the angle of that vector? So, if we want to find the angle of that vector, we are going to use tan. So, why are we going to use tan? The reason why we are going to use tan because we are going to know the ax and the ay. We are going to know this, this part as well as that part. So, meaning that our tan theta is going to be equal to, tan theta is opposite, which is going to be ay divided by what? The adjacent, which is ax. So, to find the theta, I'm going to divide both sides by tan, which is the same as I'm going to say theta is going to be equal to tan inverse, open brackets. I'm going to have ay divided by ax. Okay? Meaning that is the angle which I'm going to get. Okay? So, now, let's say that we have got a vector, which is, let's say we have got vector a. Uh, let's say this vector is 100 kilometers. Then, at an angle angle of 30 degrees from positive x axis now if i want to resolve this vector into x component i'm going just to say my ax is going to be equal to a cos theta so now i'm going to say ax what is my a my, my vector a is 100 cos the angle is 30 degrees okay so what if you do 100 cos 30 then you are going to get 86.6 meaning my a x is going to be equal to 86.6 which is going to be kilometers 
Okay. What if I want to resolve this vector into y component? It's going to be my a sine theta. Okay. So now what what I'm going to have here is going to be what is a? My my vector a is hundred. It's hundred. And then I'm going to say sine thirty. Okay. So what is hundred? Sine thirty. So it's going to be fifty. Fifty kilometers. That is the x component. Okay. Now we need to understand one thing, guys. When it when it comes for vectors, we need to understand that eh, a vector when you are you are getting the angle for vectors we are getting the angle from positive x axis okay what i mean is uh, if i have my cartesian plane this is my cartesian plane and then this is what i have so we know that uh, this is my x positive x this part is positive x this part is negative x this part is positive y this part is negative y so we are going to be getting the angles from this point all the way until where the vector is. So let's say that we have got a vector which is there. Let's say that is vector A. Then you have been told that this is 30 degrees. So now if I want to resolve that vector into A or X and Y component, I'm supposed to get the angle from this line all the way up to where the vector is. Meaning that I'm going to get a what? I'm going to get a 30. What if we have got what if we have got our line there then we have been given the angle there to say it is 30 degrees. Which angle are we going to get when we want to resolve this vector vector A into A X as well as Y component? I'm supposed to get the angle from this line all the way up to where the vector is. So we know that from this point all the way to that y line is going to be 90. So I'm going to say 90 minus 30 which is going to be 60 meaning the angle which I'm supposed to use for vector A is going to be 60 degrees. Okay. So this is the same even when it comes for when you have been given the angle in there. Let's say that we have got this vector. Now let's say that we have been given that this is vector 60. 60 degrees. The, the, uh, that is the angle vector A. So now, if you want to get the angle, you, you want just to, to need to, to get the line from this line all the way to where the vector is. Now, that that line, we know that from this line all the way to this line, it is 108. So for me to get this point from this line all the way to where, to where the vector is, I'm supposed to get 180 minus 60. Okay? Yeah, that is what we need to understand, which is going to be 120. Okay. We know that this line is 90, this line is 180, then this line is what? Is uh, 270. Then this line is here 0 as well as what? 360. But now, we need to understand sometimes what if we have been we have been told to say we have a vector which lies what? Uh, maybe which is going toward the east. Okay? Let's say that we have got vector A which is 20 newtons and it is um, going maybe toward what? Toward east. Meaning that if you have toward east, if they say toward east, meaning that the angle there is going to be zero because this line, the angle is zero. We know that from this line all the way to there is 360. So this line is going to be zero. What if they say toward north? Toward north it is going in this direction, meaning it is 90 degrees. Toward south it is going to be 270. Toward the west it's going to be what? 180. Okay, now this is just an introduction part of what vector quantity. If you want to uh, to access the full video of um, this topic, you need just to register Transcended Institute. Then you are going to know how to find the angle, how to uh, to sketch, and how to come up with a free body diagram.